So guys, we are back on the little sandbar dump. We are going to dive into everything it needs to get it running back in tip top shape again. As you saw in the last video, it was doing a lot of smoking and it just lacks power. It takes a lot to get it started, to get it to idle smoothly. And again, 200,000 plus kilometers is tired. It needs a little bit of R&R. &R. So what we're gonna do today is dive into starting out on the electrical side of things, spark plugs, wires, cap, rotor, etc. Eventually gonna be doing the time belt water pump, thermostat, the tensioner, all of that good stuff. We're gonna get into the engine mount setter, old, cracked, busted, and anything else we find along the way. Uh, one big thing is gonna be those valve stem seals. The green one behind me is here for valve stem seals. We already did through, I went through all the tune up on it but this one needs valve stem seals as well, which they are ordered. They just haven't gotten to me yet, so that'll be another day. With that said, let's go ahead and jump into it and start getting this little sandbar up and going once again. So guys, it's been really, really wet and rainy here in South Carolina, and I haven't been able to get to this thing in over a week. So we're just now getting into it. Now, as I showed in the previous video, there's a lot of buildup and a lot of gunk around the distributor, around the top of the engine at the intake manifold, all over the rocker cover, all down here around the spark plug. So went ahead and just pulled spark plug from cylinder one. As you can see, it's very dark. Now it's not wet with fuel, but it is dark. NGKs as it should have. Got a brand new set of these on the way right now from Advanced Auto Parts. Now. Our factory specification for our plug gap is one to 1.1 millimeter, if I recall correctly in the manual. These are worn. We're almost a 1.4 mil, needs a set of spark plugs. The gap is too big and uh, they're old, they're worn. You can see it, you can tell the grounding strap and the electrode are worn down. You can also see a little bit of uh, carbon tracing there down the porcelain, so probably misfiring as well. So we'll go ahead and get all these plugs pulled out, take a look at them, go ahead and get the wires off because these look fairly old and uh, get this cap and rotor off. I'm sure there's gonna be some carbon tracing in there and uh, some burnt up uh, crustiness. We're gonna get the brake parts cleaner out in the spray nozzle or blow nozzle and try to get some of this junk off of here before we open that up. But we've got our factory uh, rotor, factory cap and NGK spark plug wires. Now I can say that the owner did go through and do a compression test. Everything is good on the compression test. This one here is a little bit wet. We might have an issue with our carb leaking a little bit, but uh, more than not, that's just some wet fuel because that spark plug has not been firing well. So only cylinder three spark plug is wet. Everyone else is just very dark with soot. And uh, again, those gaps are uh, way too big. Uh, the wet one is actually past 1.4. Uh, larger gap, harder to jump, and uh, just not gonna fire. Looking at it, I don't see any cracked porcelain on any of these, but again, they're clearly worn, and uh, it's just time for spark plugs, past time for spark plugs. So we'll go ahead and, like I said, clean all this up. I'll make sure I've got the right cap. There are a couple different caps and rotors for these. Looks like I've got the right Denso pin on cap that this one has. So I'll go ahead and get to pulling that off and check to see how gnarly that is. And just that quick and easy, this thing's looking brand new again. Brake parts cleaner really is a miracle worker. Aside for the cancer part of it, you know. <laughs> 
Anyway, let's go ahead and get this old distributor cap off of here. Gotta work our way around their uh, catch can. We get this vent tube off of here. And we'll take a peek inside. And yeah, there is quite a bit of wear in this cap, quite a bit. So, new cap, new wires, new rotor. This thing gotta be running like a brand new machine again. Pretty sure I still got a fresh distributor seal. Pretty sure this rotor just pops off. I don't think it's got any kind of uh, screw that holds it on on this style. Yep. Yeah. Wish Advanced Auto Parts would hurry up and bring my spark plugs. Now the rotor doesn't look that worn or burnt down, but the cap definitely does. So I wonder if they were cheap enough in Japan to put this in without a cap. But uh, let's go ahead and get to swapping everything over. See how she runs. So Advance just dropped off new spark plugs. Looking a lot nicer. Let's go ahead and get these installed. And we'll go ahead and get the cap, rotor, and new plugs on. And I got a feeling this old girl should be purring like a kitten and uh, start way easier just with this electrical tune-up. You gotta give it to these older vehicles or non-computer controlled vehicles. It's just a uh, carburetor, spark, distributor, etc. Pretty easy to diagnose and pretty easy to keep going. I was just working on a customer's 1990 Jeep Cherokee. Had a issue where their turn signals weren't working. Easy fix. Turn signal flasher. That was it. Just the turn signal flasher. Not like a modern Jeep where you've got to go through the uh, Thickum, or not Thickum, that is, uh, what do they call it? The Tipum, Total Integrated Power Module, which could probably be the reason for no turn signal, amongst other things, because the computer controls all that instead of, uh, you know, power going in through a switch to a mechanical relay that flashes the turn signal to incandescent bulbs. Very easy to fix, cheap to fix, and easy to diagnose when there's an issue. But those days are behind us, it seems. Well, we'll just go ahead and make sure our gap is consistently right at one millimeter, or one to 1.1, as the spec says in the manual. Get these in, grab the old torque wrench, torque them down to 21 Newton meters. And we'll get those plug wires saddled up and ready to go on the new cap, which is nice and shiny, even though it's a Denso cap. Honestly, I think these actually call for Denso spark plugs from the factory. But most people switch it over to NGK, which doesn't really matter in my opinion. A lot of people swear by Denso only, but Subaru has consistently used NGK spark plugs and electrical components, and I've really seen no issues as long as you keep on top of it and replace it at the correct intervals. So we'll go ahead and get this spaghetti sorted, put on, plus the blue wires are just cool. You know my favorite color is blue anyway. But we'll go ahead and get this set and I'll bring you back. I can say that NGK and Denso both make this extremely easy because all the wires are numbered and all of the positions, not just cylinder one, are on the cap. So pretty easy to set up and get right without crossing any wires up. We'll go ahead and hook our vent tube back up.
coil wire. Pop back in. Make sure we point it 90 degrees for whatever reason. Put our coil protector as best I could name it. Back onto our ignition coil. Clip that back in place. Then the fun of uh, rerouting all of our spark plug wires. All right, now that that is all done, let's see how she does on a cold start. It was a struggle to get this thing to start prior. Let's see if it uh, made a difference. Like an absolute little champ fired right up. Now we are still gonna have to worry about valve stem seals, water pump time belt, all that good stuff but way better cold start, way better idle, and probably will run a lot better too. Now, as far as tune-up is concerned on this, there are a couple other parameters we need to check. We need to get our timing light out, and we need to check, make sure our distributor is where it needs to be. Also, we need to adjust the carburetor. Now, you need a five gas exhaust analyzer to do that, according to the factory service manual, which luckily I just happened to get one from Snap-on recently. So we'll let it warm up a little bit and we will use the five gas to adjust the carb and use the time and light to dial in the distributor. All right, so just dialed in our distributor, dialed in our timing marks. This thing is cleaned up and cleared up quite a bit. We're gonna get the five gas analyzer out now and adjust the carburetor CO level per the factory service manual. All right guys, so up to operational temperature, we've got the tailpipe sniffer, the five gas analyzer in. CO should be about one and a half percent and our hydrocarbon should be 1,000 parts per million or below. We are currently right at that, but it can take up to five minutes of readings for it to adjust. So, so far the CO is right about the 1.5 or at 1.6% and our hydrocarbons are at 600 parts per billion, but we are in the range correct for a hydrocarbon. Air fuel ratio is about 14 and a half to one. We're at 13.6, so we are a little rich. Our CO is going higher, so we will have to make a little bit of adjustment on the carb. Our adjusting screw is right here. Made a slight adjustment. We're coming back down to specification. CO should again be 1.5 plus or minus 0.5, so up to 2%, and hydrocarbons below 1,000 parts per million. So we're almost in specification. Guys, quick little correction. The engine speed adjustment is this one. This one is for the fuel for the hydrocarbons. I got that backwards uh, earlier when I had the screwdriver in here showing you, but everything's good. I'll let that adjust. It takes about five minutes or so, can take up to five minutes for it to accurately adjust at our tailpipe reading. So we'll do that and we should be good. This thing's running way better and our air fuel ratio is coming up closer to 14. So guys, it's run for quite a while now after a slight adjustment. So we're stabilized now around 1.7. 1.9, 769 in specification per the factory service manual. We are all good and this little booger is purring like a kitten, running very clean, no smoke out of the tailpipe, likely doesn't need valve stem seals because if it needed valve stem seals, it'd probably be leaking all the time. Although 
if it was cold, they could leak and the temperature could make them swell slightly to seal again. So we'll just see how badly, or if all, if it smokes on the next cold start, but they wanted to valve stem seals 200,000 kilometers. Probably gonna do that when we do the rocker cover gasket. Same as on this truck that's here for valve stem seals as well. So guys, that will do it for the video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe for future Subaru and tool content in the future. I'll see you guys in the next one.